Hey, Facebook. So I'm live. I'm so excited to take a couple of minutes, a quick couple of minutes to talk to you about freelancing in New York City and how I got my start. So I'm 25 years old, which is a little bit young to be freelancing in New York City, especially graduating school and living dream. <laughs> so let me tell you about how I got started. So the first thing I thought I would say was how I got my first gig in New York City. I was doing my undergrad at NYU, and I think this is a really great one for people either just moving here, especially if you don't know a single person. Um, yeah, what my first gig was. So I actually have been recording every single gig that I've done for the past seven years, or I guess maybe six years in New York City. So since 2011, every single gig, what kind of music it was, who was it with, where it was, who got me the gig, um, how much I paid, obviously. And it's really interesting to see, you know, different seasons, the different kinds of gigs that I'm playing, who I'm playing with, who I've been getting a lot of gigs from, that kind of stuff. So let's see. So I don't have the first year. I don't have 2010, the first fall semester in New York. But I do remember that my first gig in New York City was at Spike Hill, which is a bar and venue that used to be in Williamsburg, I believe. And I played with a rock band from DC that I grew up playing with, um, especially towards the end of high school. And I got the gig because they knew that I had just moved to New York and they didn't know any trumpet players in the area. And so they thought of me. So. I feel like that's a great example in a way of like the first musical experience that you could have either in New York or in another area, especially when you don't know anyone like I did, um, is you do know someone, you know, somebody from your hometown, from your school, somebody that knows somebody else or might know someone else that needs someone that plays your instrument. So that was my first gig in New York. And how I got more gigs after that, um, Let's see, let me just flip through my spreadsheet here. So my first couple gigs, so starting in 2011, that would be my second semester at NYU. My first gig, actually, yeah, New Year's Eve, my first gig, I got on Craigslist. And I feel like that's another great example. Um, when I first moved here, I didn't know anyone, as I said, I went on Craigslist and I looked for gigs in that way. And a lot of the people that I'm still playing with today, I originally met through Craigslist, which is crazy cool. So that one was a Craigslist gig. I played in the Bowery Poetry Club with a jazz combo. And I remember I was 18 and they gave us champagne at midnight and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. <laughs> um, okay, so my other gigs in early 2011, I promise I'm not gonna go through all of them. Let's see, I played in the NYU pep band. So NYU actually was very nice and they paid students and professionals to be in their pep band. And for me, that was a great gig because you know, you get to watch the game and network with other people on the gig and do a little texting and play these great tunes that I, as a classical major, didn't always get the chance to play, you know, in um, school. So, uh, so things like Sir Duke and that kind of stuff, like pet band stuff. Oh, I have some friends. Hi, friends. <laughs> I'm so excited that some people are watching. So I'm just talking about, I'm going through my 2011 gig log and talking about some of the first couple of gigs that I got in my first year in New York. So looking through after NYU pet band, mm -hmm. here's another one. So the other thing that I did when I first moved to New York was I joined several community groups. So these are like community orchestras. I did a couple wind ensembles. I was just looking for as much playing experience as possible. And not just anything, but like specific things that I knew that I wasn't getting um, or wanted more of in my traditional music education. So I wasn't in a wind ensemble at NYU, so I joined the Manhattan Wind Ensemble, and that group had a sister ensemble um, that rehearsed in Brooklyn. And so I see one of my first gigs in 2011 was a brass quintet gig with people that I met in that wind ensemble. Um, what else? I played on someone's film score. I actually wrote some of the music for that and I got that from seeing a sign at NYU. So that's another one, you never know. You always keep your eyes open. You never know who you'll meet or who you'll see or what you'll see. Um, what else? Okay. 
All right, so here's another great example. So Easter, my first Easter gig in New York City, and actually my second Easter gig ever, because I'd only ever been in a church once before coming to NYU. Um, so this was an organist who I had met who was a friend of somebody from the wind ensemble. So that's another example. And obviously a lot of these, maybe one day I'll publish this um, gig log to see what else I was up to. But a lot of these things are just going to be like the next person who I know. Um, yeah, so I thought I'll go down some of the questions here. Please uh, write in the comments if you have a question for me. I'd love to answer it, especially if it's crazy. Um, I know that I'm 25, and obviously I do not know everything about freelancing in New York. So I'm happy to start a dialogue. Maybe somebody has a question that we can talk about and have the comments pulled up, so I'm happy to respond back if anyone has a question. Um, all right, so a little bit more on how I got future gigs. So I sort of mentioned how a lot of the gigs that I got were from groups that I joined, community orchestras, wind ensemble, stuff like that. I also started playing in a jazz combo with people that I met from Craigslist and got a couple gigs from that. Um, so ensembles, definitely different kind of groups in the area, finding all the groups, um, because all, the, all these community ensembles that I did, I met the other people in the trumpet section, and then they started recommending me to other opportunities, some of which were paid. So I started out doing these free ensembles just as a young student looking to do any kinds of playing. And then as a result of that, I got paid opportunities from the people that recommended me to sub for them. Um, and then, yeah, more about those people. When I met people, and I still do this sometimes in New York, um, you know, you're on a gig and you're oh man, like what do you do? Like what else are you doing other than this like random gig in the middle of nowhere? Um, and when I was really young and I moved here, I used that, I'm sorry, I think we just got disconnected for a second. Okay, I think it's good. Um, when I first moved here, I didn't really know too much about freelancing in New York meant. I didn't really know what the groups were. So every time I would talk to another freelancer, I would ask them, hey, like, what other kinds of gigs do you do? Like, what groups do you play with? Not like an interrogation, but I would ask them, like, oh, do you have anything cool happening this week? I would love to come check it out. That's another one. Let me write that down so I forget. I don't forget to talk about it. Um, so I'd find out what the people, either my age or slightly older than me, were doing, what groups they were playing with, what other people, maybe they would mention another trumpet player that I didn't know. And so I would take that opportunity to remember their name, write it down. I always have a little notebook with me. Um, you know, you write it down and then I would try and get coffee or play duets with that person later. And duets, that's another one. I played, I used to be known as the duet person a little bit because I would just try and play duets with everyone. It's such a great way to network with people and to find out about someone's playing, to get better, you know, everyone, Whenever they're playing like one kind of gig, you always want to work on another side of your playing or something. So duets can be a great way to stay in shape in multiple ways. So cool. So the next thing I'll talk about really quick is um, the gigs that I put together myself. So I sort of started a brass quintet, I think when I was a sophomore. And I, I just really loved brass quintet stuff. The program that I was in didn't have, I think, yeah, my second year, and my you didn't have a brass quintet uh, because there were just like weren't quite enough people, and it's always hard, especially in school, to get five people in the same room at the same time. So I put together some brass quintet stuff uh, with people from other schools, people that I met in those community groups, and I started busking a lot. I learned all of the brass quintet repertoire through busking in the subway, on the street, playing Christmas carols all of that kind of stuff. And through doing that, I actually got a couple gigs for the quintet. So I played for a Yelp event for someone. I played a couple gigs at bars and stuff like that, like little back rooms. And these were all things that I put together myself because I wanted to be playing brass quintets. I wanted to be playing my own arrangements of stuff like, I don't know, Caravan or something. I was trying to think of a pop tune that I've arranged, but I couldn't think of one. Um, yeah. So these are all things that I put together because I wanted to be doing the playing. And I think at least what I've learned about freelancing in New York is that if you sit by the phone and wait for someone to call you, like one, that's like not always going to happen. It doesn't really work like that. You totally have to go out and get and make your own opportunities. Um, but the other thing was if I really wanted to play like pop tunes in a brass quintet setting, 
chances are someone's probably not going to call me for that gig. So if I wanted to do that, I had to put it together myself, um, which is always so fun because there's always a way to put together your own personal project, um, super random, obscure music. There's a venue somewhere. You might not get paid for it, but there's always a space and a way to make it happen. All right. So other things about how I get started freelancing. Um, I read a lot of books. <laughs> this sounds kind of stupid and obvious, but I read so many books. There's so many blogs out there, podcasts, especially now. Not so much when I first started, but now I listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, so things like Angela Beeching's Beyond Talent, David Cutler's The Savvy Musician, all of these blogs, there are more and more popping up now on freelancing. And I just try to soak up as much information as possible. There are a lot of other resources that people can check out, stuff like Chamber Music America sometimes has these webinars. There's some stuff at the Union. It's another one, the Union. Um, Local 802, I went to some of the musicians networking events and met people at those. Um, sometimes there's free food, which is always a benefit. Um, yeah, so it's been about 10 minutes. If anyone has a question, I do want to wait and see, just in case someone has a question. I I want to make sure that I answer it. Let me see. Hi, Russ. How's it going? <laughs> I see some friends here are watching. Hi. All right. Oh, wow. A lot of people are watching. How nice. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. I can think of one or two more quick things that I didn't say before. Um, so through those spreadsheets that I made, I can flip through and figure out who's called me for things recently or, you know, three years ago or everything like that, or where I originally met someone. And every season when I'm saying, oh, like, I wonder what I'll be doing next spring, or like, I wonder, like, how many things I have going on in the fall or whatever, I can look back and see what I did in previous years and compare that and say, oh, like, I know I usually get called for that one random gig. I should hit up that person, stuff like that. Um, but I think the biggest thing that has gotten me a lot more work in New York is following up. So after the gig, you know, saying thank you at the gig and then also in an email, you know, a day or later, a week later, um, just reminding the people that you played with and the people that you played for that it was so great working with them um, because it was, otherwise you wouldn't have done it. Um, so that's a really great way to do it. And then people remember you. There is one organization in the city where every time I email them and ask, you know, how everything's been going, they give me a gig. It's like crazy. <laughs> how nice. So it's like every time I send an email, they're like, oh, are you available tomorrow? So you never know. Following up, they might, especially like I do some contracting now, like through all the stuff that I put together. Um, people have started to know me as somebody that knows other people, which is great. Um, so then in doing those, like, you know, you always want to Sometimes like you're just so busy and you end up forgetting people. Um, so it's whenever somebody reaches out, whenever I reach out to other people, I know it's another opportunity to remind them, hey, I exist. <laughs> so that's great. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to talk about was in addition to like networking with people, playing duets, like going, um, like checking out groups and other things like that, knowing who's doing what and where, um, putting together gigs yourself, master classes and other resources. The other thing I think that has helped me freelancing a lot in New York is going to other people's shows. And this was really easy when I was young and stupid and <laughs> a freshman and I had nothing going on. Um, it was so great to take the time and to see other people. And this is how I would see other groups. I would meet new people. I would go up to the conductor. I would you know, do all these things to say hello. And I save every program also. That's another good one. Um, so you can always flip through and find people that you met, remember who that random second violinist was or stuff like that. So I would go to other people's shows and then I would see, are these the kind of groups that I want to play with? Like, oh, what if I put together a concert with that person? Or, oh, that person mentioned that they were putting together a concert. I should email them and find out more about it. So stuff like that. So going to other people's shows is a really great one for that reason, um, networking. But also because then when you put together a show, you'll be known as someone that is always going to other people's shows and other people will want to come to your show. So I learned that for real with my CD release stuff. Um, I did a show in New York and in Maryland and I know that a lot of the people that were there 
came because I have been going to their stuff. So it was really nice and appreciated. Let's have a couple more people that joined us. Um, does anyone have a question? I don't know if anyone does or like something to talk about, something that they're wondering what my opinion on it is. Anyone? <laughs> okay, um, before I turn this off, last thing that I just thought of was I um, took a lot of lessons throughout the past seven years, both obviously in school and out of school. And to me, that's always a great thing to do because playing for the people who are just the best of the best and learning from them and finding out what they're doing and what they're up to is kind of a way that you can sort of measure your career up to them and keep an eye out for the kind of things that you want to be doing. Um, and you never know, you know, that person might need a sub. Not that I'm doing that because they need a sub. I'm doing it to learn, obviously. Um, but you never know. So it's exciting. So that's another way to think about it. Okay, so I guess this is it. This, I'm trying to do a lot more of these. So this was just a little teaser of the first topic. So this is how I got started freelancing in New York. I hope you learned something. If you had a question, please comment and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye.